Welcome back, Troglodytes, to the Trogly's Guitar Show. Hey, we get to update the Trade Tuesday series. So if you remember from last week, we traded the Glary Strat for a Gibson Nighthawk case. Now, as you know, it took a lot longer to trade that thing, but I kind of expected it was going to be like that. Now, all the Trade Tuesday listings do get listed on Reverb. I have to put a price, that way people know the trade value I'm looking for. And in certain cases like this one, I will have to sell the item, but all of the proceeds will then be poured back into something else. So that's kind of the ground rules for Trade Tuesday. I either trade the item or I sell it and reinvest all the funds back into something else. So this was the listing of the Nighthawk case. I had it up for 150 plus 35 shipping, but how much was I able to get out of it? The total sale price was $130.50. But I can't just take that amount and go buy something because in that case, we would have been a big winner there. But we have shipping fees and reverb fees to take into account here. So at $130.50, if we take out the reverb fees, that's about 6.4%. We'll round that up to $9 because there's also another small per transaction fee. And then this one was shipped down to Florida. In this case, it cost $29.97 with Reverb's discount. So despite a sale price of 130 bucks, I was left with about $90. But coming from a $45 to $65 strat, we are still on top. So I hit up my local Craigslist as well as my Facebook pages. And I found a very interesting item that I have wanted to buy for about a month or two, but I had saw it disappeared, but it was relisted. It was what looked like an old bass guitar. The listing said everything was perfectly functional. All it needed was cleaned. Now keep in mind, when the ad first went up, they wanted like 250 bucks. It then went down to 165, but then I was like, ooh, this would knock out two stones. First, I think it's a cool item. I've been wanting to buy it anyways to take a look at it. And secondly, a lot of people have wanted to see some bass guitars on my channel. So I sent the lady this message, essentially explaining my situation. I've got $91.50 in order to spend on something for my new series. And this is one time when a seller actually comes back, they don't want that extra $1.50. They were willing just to accept a straight $90. This base was located about an hour away, so it was almost a two hour drive there and back. Here you can see me making the deal. Not the best camera angle, but, but I did get the base. But as soon as I saw that guy walking from his porch, I knew this base was like garbage. <laughs> it was going to have more issues than the seller probably even knew about. Whilst we were talking here, I asked him if he knew the history of this base at all. Uh, he said he bought it at a garage sale about five years ago. He said he paid $25 for it. So at that point, I was thinking, oh, he's really happy getting this 90 bucks right here. <laughs> But other than that, he just said he played it a little bit and uh, he just eventually switched to lead guitar. So let's see this bass. So this is what we're starting with. A dirty, beat up bass. I'm going to see if I can make it at least presentable, maybe even playable. Uh, we've got some broken parts here. But take a look at these strings. They're just completely rusted. Now we are on a super budget here, so I can't afford to spend 30 bucks for new bass strings. So I think I might try the old boiling the strings trick to see if that works. It'll be a fun experiment in frugality for us. What I loved about this bass is it just looks so cool. It looks like one of the Fender ones. But look at this action, absolutely unplayable. The neck also needs some help but let's go ahead and dig into it and see what we can do. First things first, I had to get those old rusty strings off this instrument in order to do any type of cleaning. I removed those ashtray covers and holy cow, do you see all this dirt and grime that's built up under those things? It is insane. I figured while I was at it, I would go ahead and remove the pick guard, the pickups and the electronics as well. I ran into a lot of strip screws on this guitar that I had to use pliers to remove. But I took the pickups out, they were very dirty and dusty, 
But with all that done, I could finally give this guitar a nice wipe down job. I just use a little bit of Goo Gone. I mean, it's not the most professional stuff to use, but it seems to work pretty well. And I just wiped everything down on this instrument to at least make it appear cleaner. Uh, you'll find it interesting that it's a tobacco sunburst finish underneath the pickguard. They didn't actually bother doing the red burst on that side. The bridge saddles were way up into the air, and I thought it was interesting how the grounding for the bridge is just drilled directly into the body right there. The frets clearly needed some help. They were so dirty. Luckily, a little bit of a steel wool treatment made them look just like new, and there was very minimal fret wear, mainly just kind of in like the cowboy cord area. I also cleaned the debris off of the fretboard and wiped it down once again with some Goo Gone to restore that natural luster. The next thing to tackle was the relief in the neck, or the lack thereof. It was actually bowing the opposite direction you would normally see. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any of my Allen keys to grip the truss rod, so that's either stripped or I just didn't have the right size. So I just wiped down the face of the headstock and I retightened the screws of the tuners. Next, I decided to take the neck off. There's one strip screw for the neck, so I had to use my pliers once again. And then I just kind of finished wiping off the rest of this guitar including the pick guard as well as those metal plates before I went to clean the strings. So here's my attempt at first boiling base strings. I read if you put a little bit of baking soda in your water and you boil them for 10 to 15 minutes, it will restore some of the original luster of the strings. So I thought I would do exactly that. Now, unfortunately, I don't think this process did a lot for these strings, but it at least made them a little bit nicer to handle, and they weren't as dirty looking. They still had those rust spots, though. So, at this point in time, I decided, well, let's go ahead and reassemble this thing since I've given everything a pretty good wipe down. I decided to actually change all the knobs on this because that way we have a matching set, and this is a knob I probably would have never used on anything else, but I thought it looked good on this base. I then adjusted the action to what I thought it could potentially be and reapplied the pick guard. I gave everything a good wipe down once again and reinstalled the ashtray. And then I shimmed the neck with about six business cards. I have no idea if I did that right, but hey, there's now a shim in the neck. I went ahead and restrung the bass and tuned it up to pitch, and then I tried to adjust the action to make it at least a little bit more playable. I cleaned the electronics, and here we go. Alright, so we have this thing cleaned now. Uh, I didn't do a perfect polishing job or anything, I just wanted to get all the dust mites off of it so we could actually see this guitar. It cleaned up beautifully. Unfortunately, it's not the best playing guitar, but it is a lot better than when it first came here. So let's learn about it. The brand for this instrument is Kent. I did a little bit of research. I'm not going to go as in depth as I usually do on other episodes, mainly because I know nothing about these Japanese imports and stuff. But Kent was a model under Gaiatone, and I guess that all started in 1960 by a distributor in New York. So throughout the 60s, 70s, I don't know if they made it to the 80s, I didn't do that much research. Gaiatone is like the parent company, but they also branded things as Kent, Saturn, Marathon, Starlight, and Royalist. A lot of them were made in Japan, and then towards the very end of their runs, like Korea, I guess. This one has a serial number of W0. 20678. It's just on a little sticker right here. So, overall, uh, trading a case for a base, hey, I like that. I would honestly probably keep this thing if it wasn't in my Trade Tuesday series. I just think it looks so good because essentially this is a ripoff of a Fender Jazz bass. You've got the nice cherry sunburst color. If you look closely, you can see some nice wood grain underneath. 
I mean, the only thing visually about this guitar is I think the back is ugly, but I'm pretty sure that's how the guitar came from the factory, simply because of the other ones I've seen online. So it might not be a fantastic bass, but worst case scenario, it could be a wall hanger for someone because this thing looks sweet. So I'm going to put an approximate trade value of about $225 on this. So let's go ahead and hear how this guitar sounds. Remember, I'm not a bassist, but I'm trying my best. I don't have a proper bass amp, so this is running through a Spider 4 150 watt, and the tone pot doesn't seem to work. Now that we know how this guitar sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. Okay, so this thing, it's not in very good shape. You can see you've got some dings and scratches on the face of the headstock. Truss rod, uh, when I was removing this screw, the top just broke off of it. So the screw itself is in there, but the head's not. But you still have those original two there. Again, I was unsuccessful in moving the truss rod. You have a lacquered over what appears to be maple fretboard here. You've got some light fret wear, but overall it's actually in pretty good shape now. It's playable about to the seventh fret. You can get to the ninth, but anything past the twelfth, it's a little bit more of a struggle to play. The body has a plethora of scratches, nicks, and dings. You could probably polish this thing up to look even better, but I figure, you know, fenders are basically known for being beat up and they look good that way so I didn't want to do any like black touch-ups or make it super polished but I at least cleaned it up. Now something I found interesting is this thumb rest. The ones that I've seen usually they screw from the top and like into the body. These ones actually screw from behind the pick guard. I just thought that was fascinating. Unfortunately if you lift up on this you can see that it kind of flexes the pick guard. So it's not the best thumb rest in the world, but hey, it's there. Back of the headstock, I mean, you've got edge wear, you've got some nicks and dings here, but there doesn't appear to be any breaks, cracks, or repairs. You've got a big old volute right here, so that tells you this is probably like a early to mid 70s model. You've got some impressions on the neck. I didn't really notice them while playing it though. Again, I shimmed it. I don't know if I'm supposed to do it like that, so you know it's there and what's nice about this back is it's more of like a glossy satin feel it's kind of strange to describe something as that but it's not as finished feeling as the top is and i kind of like that for the fact 
that it can move against you a little bit easier. And it looks like this is some sort of sandwich of woods right here, which I thought was interesting. We'll do a quick black light test here now. You can see it glows a beautiful green color here. So that tells us original finish. But once again, lots of nicks and dings. Not collector's grade, but then again, I don't know if anybody's collecting old Kent bases. I think these are just, you know, decent little players and whatnot for someone on a budget. Now it does look like we have some sort of touch up right here. So I don't know if the finish was chipping and somebody oversprayed it, but that is not glowing the way I would expect to see. I don't see any work on the back like it was cracked or anything though. So that looks like a cosmetic touch up to me because it still feels glossy. So it's not just an area of worn finish or anything, but you can admire the fretboard because you don't have the lacquer worn off of that. That's nice. Back of the headstock glowing the way I would want to see. No funny business there. Back of the neck is also looking pretty good. You do have wear to the finish right here. You can feel that. So I'm wondering if somebody took this neck and shaved it down a little bit, thinking that was what was the issue to the guitar. And in turn, that's what made the neck not like come at the right angle. I mean, you can see I got a pretty thick stack of business cards there, but the action is still pretty high. And the neck isn't like super bowed or anything, so it's just like the angle is super off for some reason. So that might explain that. But the back has that same green glow to it, so most likely that is also the original finish, despite being vastly different from the front of this base. Uh, something else I do need to disclose here. It's kind of hard to see, but you do have some pocket cracks. Um, I don't believe they're gonna be anything that spreads or causes you issues, but you do need to know there are some light cracks on both sides of the neck pocket. But most bolt-ons that I've had do have that. That doesn't mean it's right to have it, but I do want you to know about them. If you're interested in trading me something for this guitar, feel free to message me on Reverb or on my Facebook page. And we will see you on the next installation of Trade Tuesday. Remember, it won't be every Tuesday, but on a Tuesday will be the next update. Thank you troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.